everybody. So, here we have the Cossel from Folger Tech printing. And it's printing a nice calibration cube there. And we've got some uh, cold PLA there. My wife's favorite color. As you can see, it's just chucking right along there, which is really cool. So far, the layer height is really well done. Well, it's due to a Z-probe configuration in the firmware. The M212 command and all the other commands that are soft programmable do not seem to work very well. It's probably just due to ramps itself. Um, or my ignorance, possibly. I've tried a couple commands, some of them don't seem to work. But anyway, um, so it's trucking right along there. It's really cool. Finally got it up and printing. So some changes that um, were made, just to help a little bit. We're on the tensioners up here for this uh, Cossel. We've got, trying to get in here to see it so you guys can see it. Instead of using those nylock nuts, we use the T-nuts. What that does is it just gives us a better way to adjust, you know, as we go down the road. You know, fumbling with a nylock and a, and a, and a uh, set of pliers is not fun when you can't see the nylock nut. So I thought the T-nut is big enough to fit outside of that little gap and the, the pan head screws are long enough I thought why not use those so that's just a, a build adjustment as you could say I also printed these nifty little cable tie mounts and hot glued them to the metal ends as a temporary uh, wire management solution those can be found on Thingiverse I'll be happy to post those in the description for you and as you can see, we got the LCD up and kicking. Don't have a case for it yet, but we're working on it. Um, so yeah, some notes I would say on this build are, uh, it's the parts are extremely well put together. I'm very impressed with it, especially for the money. You really can't go wrong. Um, Chinese made kits are, are nice for what they're good for, but um, if you can, grab this kit. It's well designed, well built. I've uh, not had a problem with customer service at all. Um, Folger Tech's been really great with that. So that's been a, an interesting development um, because that was actually the biggest gripe that I heard about uh, Folger Tech so far was the, the uh, customer service. But I, I didn't experience that. That's just my, you know, just me saying I didn't experience that. Um, Another thing, I don't know if you can see, on the carriages here on the back, the screws that I had, I had to make an adjustment and get a different set of screws. Well, Lowe's didn't carry the right kind of screw. So what I did was I took a Dremel and I shaved the end of the screw off and shaved the nylock nut off so it gives smooth travel on all three of these little carriages. That's a really a kind of a must. Uh, smooth motion means smooth printing. So. As you can see, we're trucking right along. Um, after you figure your build height, and the way you do that is you take your your total height, which for this one, if you do it all the way at the very top like that, and I mean to the very tip top, that's going to be three sixteen point. Oh wait, I said it wrong. Sorry, three fifteen point seven. So three fifteen point seven was my total length. The way you find this is you give it a bigger print height than it's supposed to on the firmware, as recommended in Folger's guide. Um, I used a 317, I think, or no, a 316, I'm sorry. It was set at 315 from stock, so it wasn't far off. So you're going to take 315 and you're going to um, go down, and then you're going to manually bump it all the way down. And if you can't reach the bottom, you just have to add a bigger print height. Just guess, it doesn't matter. So, well, it does. Just try to get close. So, I, mine was like 0.9 off. So what you're going to do is take the 
the number or whatever you put in for the print height and you're going to bump it down all the way till you get down to that um, to where that paper test. I don't know if you guys have ever done a paper test. That's just sliding a piece of paper under the nozzle, bumping it down or jogging it down until the very bottom hits the very bottom of that hot end hits the paper and you want it to just barely start catching. Feel some friction when you move it back and forth and you want to use after that you want to use the M114 command. What that does is it gives you your position. The Z position is what's really important here. The Z position is going to be some bit off depending on what you assign to the printer. Mine was like 0.9 off and I used 316 point six or something like that, I don't remember. I think it was, I used 316.6. So, it's it was off by 0.9, and then I subtracted 316.6, and I took 0.9 away from it, which gave me 315.7. That is how I derived that value. So, from that point, um, I was still printing above the bed, but that's just because that Z probe right there, there's a value in uh, your firmware called Z probe offset. Normally you can use the M212 command, that didn't work for me. I had to go back into the firmware and adjust it and reflash my firmware. No biggie, um, just a little patience. So I did that and then um, it was all good from that point. That's, that's, that was pretty much it. Um, you do have to adjust your effector rod length, which is that nice rod there. If you followed Folger's guide, that's 230 millimeters from bolt hole to bolt hole. So we got that, and then we got um, your rod or uh, smooth rod offset. I think that's what it's called. It's if you follow the guide, the guide will tell you what two values to change. Smooth rod offset for this model, as long as you followed Folger's guide, would be 178, which basically means the distance between the hot end and the bit of your tower there. I believe. I think. I don't know. I'll have to look back at that guide. Anyway, I've also got a nifty guide that the RepRap community provided me with uh, to help me get going, which was pretty cool. And shout out to the RepRap community. They were more than helpful. And uh, yeah, I know I'm printing on top of the box. My office is kind of messy. So, yeah. At least I uh, did my wires halfway right. Yeah, we're getting there. Just, just I have a problem with wires, if you can't tell. But anyway, so we got that going. Um, one thing I'll notice, uh, I'll, I'll uh, just say about the nice little integrated spool holder over there. Mine broke. <laughs> Do be careful of it. That was through my ignorance. Um, not through any weakness in the material whatsoever or whatever. That was me being stupid. Um, no lies. I was trying to adjust the printer or something about the printer on the bottom of the board and lo and behold I uh, cracked it. Um, I plan to glue it back. It's acrylic. You can use super glue and nobody will care. Well, unless you just, you know, can't stand that little itty bit of glue and then, you know, go buy another piece of acrylic and cut it, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I'm also looking at getting a laser to put on the end of here. Um, I'm debating whether to do it just for engraving purposes. Um, you can use some of the one watt lasers from China that are pre-assembled and I'll, I'll do a video on that. Um, another option, uh, thanks to Folger, they were telling me there was a CO2 um, laser, which would be really cool to do. CO2 would cut uh, acrylic. Just got to be a little careful, you know, hitting the wonderful build plate there and the motors or wires or whatever. So I had the idea of taking some um, rubber mat and putting down there, maybe to, to keep from burning through. Even if you did, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt anything. Or, or maybe, a, you know, something, something like that. So the idea with that would be, of course, to fit a fan up here and to enclose this in... Um, with some, some plexi, plexiglass sheet. Not too hard to do, pretty simple to do. That's just for fume extraction. You want to run that through a good carbon-based filter. You can use old fish tank filters. Um, well, not old, but you know fish tank filters if you want. 
Uh, that's an old trick. Um, don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> I have worked some manufacturing places that are not so savory. Let's just leave it at that. Um, anyway, so as you can see, this thing is just ticking along, and I can't be happier. Great kit, really is. And if you look at the metal ends, they're so much better than the, the PLA. I know there's a little gap right there, but God help me if I could fix that. I've tried. Um, that's not anything to do with Folger. That's probably my stupidity. It was a little hard to get those uh, panhead screws in there. But just a tip, instead of using a um, needle nose pliers, if you could use a set of uh, surgeon scalpels, I have a set. Let me grab them real quick. I mean, not scalpels, forceps. See, this is what I get for recording videos at like 4 a.m. But, um, yeah. Of course, the one tool I want just dis a frickin' peers. Um, anyway, <laughs> so these are. An unusually long set of needle nose that will also do just to hold a hold a screw in there. It, you know, there's some really tiny panhead screws that you got to get down inside those corners. The corners are probably the bitchest part of this thing. They're entirely the most pain in the in the ass. Um, once you get through that, it's attaching these 2020 extrusions to the corners. And dude, once you do that, it's 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 easy. It probably took me realistically two hours, three hours, and that was probably due to me being silly, not to anybody else. I just, it was probably due to me, no lies. Um, anyway, so once you attach those corners, it's just sliding these into the slots, cranking them down, you know, getting your carriages on there, getting your carriages assembled, getting your hot end mounted in. ABS has a tendency to shrink, so having a Dremel on hand isn't a bad idea. Um, that's nobody's fault. That's just a, you know the truth of life. ABS will shrink in manufacturing purposes. Um, you can offset that by increasing your design one to two percent. Um, shouldn't be a problem, but you can do that. And then, um, <coughs> yeah. So that's it. It's freaking working. Oh, I didn't need to mention, um, to set up your auto leveling, that, that should be uh, already set up in your in your Folgers got in your in your Folgers firmware, which is like a revision B firmware. That's cool. Um, the probe, you need to add the G29 G code into that after you're done. And the reason for that is the G29 will take the probe and tell it to probe the bed and use those values to do what's called tramming which basically means the plate's a little off in this place or this place you need to raise here drop here to maintain the same level it's a pretty simple process really but it's freaking cool I just I get mesmerized watching this thing print but NTVs um, that's all for now Please stay tuned and we'll, we'll get you sorted with some more upgrades, details, all kinds of cool stuff. Alright guys, signing off from Charleston, South Carolina.